Liverpool-based biodiversity entrepreneur Andrea Koo is hoping to bring office workers and worker bees together in a plan to both increase urban biodiversity and enhance employees' well-being. Andrea's network of hives already includes honeybees hidden on urban rooftops and patches of suburban green spaces, but the project could see hives installed on a new city centre skyscraper, with corporate workers taking on the beekeeping mantle. So we approached um, this building contractors in Liverpool uh, to train up their staff, so their build, whoever, admin, builders or whatever, um, to learn about bees and beekeeping and to install a few, three or four beehives on site. And they learn about beekeeping and look after the hives and uh, they are going to be putting in, you know, green spaces, wildflowers and doing a load of tree planting as well to support nature, nearby pollinators and also, you know, their bees as well. The Managing Director of Bee4 Biodiversity, which has an ethos of promoting biodiversity through community engagement, finds the management of hives has proved the most popular method of promoting the cause. One of the activities that's the most successful is beekeeping. So people want to learn about beekeeping, but instead of thinking honey's the end game, that's like, you know, what everyone's after, it's kind of forgetting about that because it's not all about the honey. It's about providing homes and habitats, food for bees, all bees, not just honey bees. One additional byproduct of successful urban beekeeping extends to determination of the flora surrounding hives through detailed analysis of the honey gathered. The National Honey Monitoring Scheme uses honeybees to monitor long-term changes in the condition and health of the UK countryside. Um, I sent off two honey samples from my beehives um, in Toxteth, so Liverpool 8, and then Nest Botanic Gardens because I thought it'd be nice to see the differences between them. I thought Nest Botanic Gardens, thousands and thousands of plants that the bees can go and visit there. Toxus, because it's urban, maybe less or whatever, I don't know. Say there was, I think there were about 30 different plants in Toxus, and Nest Gardens, about 20, a nice. lot less. So you just think, oh, okay, right, fair enough. Nest Gardens, so just say the bees were here, and all of Nest Gardens is here. It just seems like the bees have thought, we're going to go to the farmland. Andrea's work is critical for helping to facilitate an understanding by the wider community of the importance of increasing Liverpool's biodiversity in city centre and urban areas. This is particularly vital given the fast regeneration of swathes of Liverpool for both residential and business purposes. And understanding where the bees are foraging can also help us to understand just how important our humble garden plots are to the health of the bee population in the local environment. I mean, South Liverpool is is green, it's quite green. And then you get pockets of like North Liverpool or just kind of going in towards Sefton, which aren't that green. But then you have kind of, you know, the canal lines and train lines and brownfield land and gardens and all of those kind of joined together. They're the mosaic really of, of biodiversity patches that link together. And I always say it creates like a buffet of food for for wildlife, for bees, for example. If you were to pave all of this and fake grass down, you're not gonna get anything, birds or anything coming here. It's gonna be like desert for them. So if you did that and next door did it, next door did it, then the weed killers and things like that, taking the trees out, taking the plants out, can't be bothered too much hassle to look after them. You're taking out that whole buffet there, so you're not gonna, your ecosystem is broken down. Mm -hmm.